This is Chris Mara at Comic-Con at Home, and I'm remotely connected at the Tin Fish in San Diego. And we are with John Rakish. It's the panel, it's called Location Managers Guild International, Hollywood Location Scouts. Hi, John. Hello, thanks for having me on. Happy to have you. Where is your home? I'm actually based out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So I wish I was there right now, but sadly I'm stuck like everyone, you know, we're all quarantined at home. Yeah. Well, tell me about the panel. Well, this is our ninth year. Uh, we do a panel every year where we bring location managers and scouts from various disciplines of television and feature film to come and talk about what we do and how we're actually a creative force in a lot of the, the media that you see and that's celebrated every year at Comic-Con. Usually do a panel of five and a moderator. We try to get a good cut of you know, international people, people from across North America, and try to make a diverse panel that's still reflective of some of the current things that have been shot in the last few years, and then you know, explain what we do and open up the floor to questions. And it's been a successful panel every year and keeps growing. Why don't you explain what you do? Sure. So we are the ones who actually find the places that shows and movies actually go film at. So the quick version of it is, there's an idea and a script that's then presented to directors, producers, and designers who then hire location managers and scouts to actually go find these places that they can then, you know, modify or shoot as is to put on screen. So, I mean, this year's panel, we've got the, we've got Emma Pill, who was the location manager on 1917. So she can explain all the things I did to basically put that amazing World War II epic together. Uh, we had James Lynn who did the last two Avengers movies um, and some of the Fast and Furious. Jeff Harris, who was star on Star Trek Picard. Asha Sharma, who was um, Guardians of the Galaxy in World War Z. And it's quite a good mix of showing what we can do when we're given the chance to be creative and then just answer some of the questions that people might have about the process itself. So how do you actually find a location? I mean, what is the process? Um, it's a lot of, you know, it's, it's, a, we're, it's a creative decision. So it's consultation with either the, the, the director, the production designer, the producer, and the location manager to kind of figure out, okay, if the story is very specific, then that helps. It's, you know, a house in Boston in Southeast UK, you can narrow that down. But when it's some of these more um, fantastical elements where there's a lot of CG involved, it's what are you looking for? We're looking for a field. What's the dimensions of it? it, it it's very much, we try to take the, what we can of the real world and then with some cinematic magic and the creativity of all the other people involved, put what you see on screen on screen. So it, it's very much. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, it's very much. It's it's you know we're given an idea and when we're lucky enough that we're all creative and, and good at what we do and we can go out there and find something in the real world that either looks exactly like it or we can alter it. How has the pandemic changed scouting? Well, we pretty much globally shut down production in March when you know the pandemic hit. I mean, the, the date that's in my mind on the production I was on it was Friday, March 13th. We stopped and we're still waiting to come back. But in all the consultations I've been in through the Location Managers Guild International and our, and our respective unions, um, we're looking at doing it probably a bit more digitally. It's a scout who's gonna be taking a lot more video, 3D images, 3D camera stuff, and showing things remotely to cut down on, you know, 20 or 30 people coming on mass to go look at something. It's gonna be a lot more remote, or, or remote work for the time being. That's the one big change. I mean, there's still gonna be a need to go out there and find things. Because if we don't, if, you know, if we haven't seen it, we don't know what's out there. So there'll still be some boots on the ground and some research and a lot more reliance on technology to kind of get everyone to see things before we actually physically have to show up. So how do I get my house scouted so it could be in a movie? And do okay. I want that? Um, it depends. Usually, I mean, I would say, because I'm, I'm heavily biased, yes, you should. Um, we'll always put it back the way it was. You know, you can always have a fun story to tell. But for anyone that is looking at that, I would reach out to their local um, municipal film commission or, or state or Canadian province provincial film commission. They most always have a list of people who are interested so that when a production comes to town and is looking for a house, they can give them a list of, well, here's, you know, 150 some odd homeowners who've expressed interest. Um, not that we won't go knocking on doors, but it's sometimes nice to have a reference point of, of who's, who's willing. So I would reach out almost every city or municipality or state or local region has some sort of either economic development or their tourism branch, something to do with, with film and television production. I, I mean, it's a booming business in, in you know, most regions, nations, provinces, everywhere. We're, we're, we're waiting to come back. Everyone's been at home watching all the content, so someone's got to start making new stuff. 
So the Comic Con um, at home, it's kind of a different type of panel. How'd that work out for you? Um, it's different in the sense that it's always been a bit of a thrill to, to see actually a room fill up of people who are interested in what you do. I mean, no one really knows you know, everyone kind of doesn't realize how people find what you do interesting until you turn around and there's a room of 400 people like we had last year who actually want to listen. So that took it away a little. We had the advantage that we weren't having to worry about people traveling because um, we do want to get people from overseas to kind of, we are an international guild. It made it a little easier. We didn't have to worry about travel and accommodations and the usual chaos and trying to find a room in a hotel in San Diego two weeks before Comic-Con. So it, it was different. I mean, basically it was, more comfortable that we had a chance to kind of all sit at home and record it via Zoom and then, you know, have it ready to go for today. How difficult was it for a location scout to, uh, to find the location of the room where you're going to have your Zoom? Uh, we all basically did it at home. I, I believe I was in my home office. I think everyone pretty much just found a quiet corner at home to do it and no <laughs> one tried to be too... You know, it's the day of Zoom. You're, you're, you're wondering if people are even wearing pants when you're looking at them on screen anymore. Everyone's just at home being way too comfortable. I hope you're wearing pants. I am, yes. <laughs> um, I don't need to stand up to prove it, but I am. I'm actually wearing shorts, but yes, I, I, I have clothes on. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, we're just glad that we could be a part of the tradition that we've been building the last few years. We're actually really happy that San Diego decided to do something and, and reached out to us and asked us to be a part of it because we've been doing this, you know, now our ninth year and we started at one of the hotels across the street when we first did now we're in the main building and we kind of felt bad that we couldn't do something so this is great i mean it's still keeping the spirit alive and then hopefully we'll all be together again in 2021. thank you john rakesh this is chris morrow at comic-con at home and we miss you and we'll see you soon thank you it's been a pleasure <laughs>